truly plugged in. 866-224-5422. That's AMP, the number two, dot TV. The opinions expressed on the following sponsored program are strictly those of the host, guests, and callers, and not necessarily those of this station, its staff, management, or sponsors. Welcome, welcome, welcome. It is Monday night, 9.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And you know what that means. It is time for the show that you've been waiting for, Zero to Shiro. I'm so excited to have you. And if you are watching via social media, whether it's Periscope, YouTube, Facebook Live. I want to thank you for joining us. I am your guest, Anne Charlius of Shiro Rising. And I have a very special guest on tonight. I can't wait to introduce her to you. Over the past several months, I've really gotten to know her and be inspired by her. But first things first, Thank you to our listeners via radio. We love you here in sunny South Florida, Boca Raton, Deerfield Beach, Fort Lauderdale. Welcome, welcome, welcome. And if you're watching via live stream, remember, sharing is caring. You never know who can be inspired by this message. So definitely hit that share button and share, share, share. Now, let me tell you about this amazing woman. She is patching into us via electronic technology. Jomel Bell, are you there? Hey, girl, hey. Hey, girl, hey. I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes, I hear you, and you look glorious, absolutely glorious. Let me just introduce you to the audience. Listen, if you have ever heard of Hallmark, she is about to take Hallmark down, okay? She is building an empire that is going to empower, inspire, and transform people everywhere. Just like Hallmark has their greeting cards and their channels and their beautiful gifts that you can get, give someone to empower them, to inspire them, to put a smile on their face. This girl, Jamel Bell, of Hive Over Matter, she is building an empire that is doing it for the culture. Can we say doing it for the culture? It's doing it for, for the, the culture. culture while also inspiring us to live our best life. And what I love about her is that she's doing it while juggling a full hand of things. She is a wife. She is a mother. She is an entrepreneur. And she is pregnant. Can we say, hey, girl, hey, hey, baby hive. Hey, baby hive. And this past week, she has done an historic event, the inaugural event for poets worldwide. Forget about the Nobel laureate. No one wants the Nobel laureate in literature anymore. We are going to replace that for the culture with her great organization, her great program. Please introduce yourself to the audience, Jomel, and tell them about what went down in Tampa, Florida this week. Oh, my goodness. And you're making me shy. Oh, my goodness. That introduction. I can't. Uh, you, are, you are just too kind, and I'm so, um, I'm so humbled and so excited to be here. It's interesting because I think as women, it's very difficult for us to receive compliments. We can give them out all day, but it's very difficult to receive them because we are often um, taught that being humble means to be um, not clear about your greatness. And so I want to thank you so much for just that warm, amazing welcome. And I receive all of it. I just receive it all. <laughs> so, um, so as you mentioned, so Hive Over Matter is a storytelling company, our mission is to wrap women in art and affirmation through experiences that inspire. Um, and so this past Sunday was a perfect embodiment of doing just that. Um, I literally just got off the phone with a girlfriend of mine who talked to with a girlfriend of hers who can't stop talking about it. Um, it was just an amazing event. We gave away our first annual Her Story Poetry Award and scholarship. Um, and it was a non-traditional scholarship because the, the contestants were not in school per se, but they were in the school of life, 
okay? And so they're artists, and um, they competed, and it was such an amazing event. We had a lineup of wonderful poets, male and female, all who had created pieces that celebrated women um, in some way, shape, or form and really lifted us up. Um, the ambiance was beautiful. We had a wonderful show. We had about 100 people in the space, um, vendors, local vendors, and the wine was great. And um, it was just it was just a really amazing time. And it was one of the first times um, that I had an opportunity to speak to this particular audience at a venue, at an event. And it just it was wonderful. It was just such a good time. And I, I know you couldn't be there because you were handling business. Right. But, you but were there listen, listen, it was just so wonderful. I, if I had my private jet, I would have been there. But dealing with commercial <laughs> airlines, I just couldn't do it. But I was so <laughs> disappointed because I know what you are when I'm intimately talking to you one-on-one, -on -one, how much of an inspiration you are. So I know that with all that energy in the room, the vibration mm. had to be out of control and it, it probably overran run, run people's emotions. It was insane. And one of the great things, because we were in the Tampa Tribune and then um, someone from the Sentinel showed up and actually did a feature in an interview, and it was one of the first times, honestly, and this was really a part of my journey as well, um, that I read my story from someone else's eyes out loud, you know, when I when I read it. And it was such an interesting thing because for me, um, just to kind of tell you a little bit about where I came from and how I even got to this place with wanting to create Hive Over Matter, um, I used to be a project manager a community organizer. I did a lot of com music, um, community advocacy work, and my heart had always been for people. But I realized that my perception was very external, looking out at the world and saying, what do I want to change? What things are frustrating? You know, I'm really tapping into that and finding myself getting constantly overwhelmed because, you know, I would pour out um, into the many organizations I was in, into the relationships that I had and to my family and to all of the things and trying to be this particular persona that was crafted for me, right, by, by whoever crafted it, it wasn't mine, um, and finding disappointment, you know, figuring out, like, man, I'm just, I don't feel appreciated, I, I'm not doing it, and the reason is because it was not an internal journey, right, it was, everything was very external, and so um, I had an experience about seven years ago when all of it crumbled. You know, I had a wonderful position and a wonderful job, but I actually ended up quitting my job because I didn't feel appreciated. Um, so I was unemployed for about a year. Um, you know, a wonderful relationship, and we just had to have faith, and so then that wasn't there. And then, you know, my family, I had a huge family tragedy. So everything that I had had really, in one moment, just disappeared. And I had to really rebuild um, my self-identity and understanding what was important and what wasn't. Um, and that was a journey. And so fast forwarding to today, I realized the power of my thoughts and the power of my words and finding healing in embracing my story and leaning into the things that happened are what they were because they created me in exactly the way that I am. And I think I'm pretty amazing in this moment. I wouldn't want to be anyone else. So I'm grateful for the pain. I'm grateful for the, you know, the lessons that I've learned because I think I'm a better person for it. And that's really what I want to inspire women to do is to embrace their journey and to travel well. Absolutely. Now, we met at an event that I was at that I had an opportunity to speak at, but then you became a member wow. of my power mastermind. And for those of you who don't know what a mastermind is, it's where like-minded individuals come together where they have a mentor, a coach, a consultant, whatever you want to call that person, help and guide them in action steps for their business. And I have been that wow. coach, that mentor to you. Tell me about your experience. Tell me some of the things that you've learned through the Power Mastermind that has allowed Absolutely. you to take this and really kind of be a star student. <laughs> <laughs> well, first of all, you you really stood out 
to me. Um, there was um, a couple keynote speakers that were there, and the event itself was wonderful. Um, but you really stood out because of your story, the fact that you are um, a woman who, and that in that moment, was living out a path that I saw for myself in terms of entrepreneurship. Um, and you had gone, you had gone through your own challenges and and you know hurdles that you had to jump, but the the commitment to yourself to continue forward and the success was there. And I said, hmm, I think I want to, I think I want to talk to her. I have to learn some things from her. And I really have. Um, my experience with Shira Rising and the Mastermind Group is definitely full of a lot of amazing women who are all unique in their own ways and who all have a lot to contribute and to bring to it. But I want to say probably the most beneficial thing that I'm so grateful for is the one-on-one -on -one time that we've had together, whether it's through the training that you do or through, you know, the conference calls that we have, um, because I have a ton of ideas, but sometimes getting them one before the other and kind of coming up with things to think outside of the box, you're really, really good at <laughs> thinking of those things. I mean, that was just so helpful is putting some clarity to some of the larger ideas that I had. Um, and then also just being that example to say, you know what, this is what we're going to do. Just keep doing it. Whatever it is, just keep moving. Absolutely. Just keep going. Absolutely. And just having that support was really helpful. You know, I want to talk about procrastination a little bit. And the reason mm -hmm. I want to talk about it is because when this poetry award first came into existence, you thought about doing it in 2018. Yes. And you I said, you know what? No, this is not the year for me to procrastinate. And I don't know if we even have enough of time to make it happen. But no, we're going to move it up. Now, most people push things back. You decided to move it up. Tell right. us a little bit about what was your mindset? What caused you to do what most people would not have been able to do? Well, one... I am. I am with child. You mentioned that earlier. And um, I really believe that this love baby, when it was conceived, and even just the journey of, of, of carrying her, I think is very symbolic in that I'm birthing a business and a child at the same time. Um, mm. And I wanted to, I want planning is important, right? And timing is important. And so in January, I see a certain place for the business to be. You know, in February and March, I see that place, and I knew that if done right, this event would really be a catalyst for women and for the growth of the business. And I, I just thought now is a better time. We should, we should do it, and it was enough time. It was perfect, and and people are asking for the next one, so I'm planning. <laughs> I'm planning another one for March. That is going to be a Astounding. It's going to be wonderful. And I'm so glad that I didn't wait because it reminds me of, um, I don't even know if I heard this somewhere, if I just thought it up out of my head, but I just believe that we have to live out our missions and our visions because there's somebody who's waiting for us to be who we're determined to be. Absolutely. Um, one of my homeschooling muse, the homeschool my daughter, is Marva Collins. She has long since passed away, but she was a fierce advocate for education out of Chicago. And when she started, she definitely didn't do it for the notoriety or anything else. Um, she did it to, to save lives of the, the children in her neighborhood and to save their minds. And in doing that and in doing it the way that she did, fast forward 30 years later, me reading about her and watching her story, she didn't know Jamil Bell would ever come into existence, but her story has impacted me. So if whatever I can do in this moment can change my life and make me a better person for the people who I love and care about and then ripple out into the universe so that a young lady, you know what I mean, who's born 30 years from now can learn from it, then I did my, I did what Absolutely. I did. Absolutely. And that's what I love about it because this is a great example Great example. And hello, Angel Myers. Angel Myers says, I am thankful for the journey and the war wounds, too. Absolutely. We have to become thankful in the valley.
Because trust me when I say the valley is getting you ready for the mountaintop. Just like climbing a real mountain, there are certain things you need to do at the valley and as you go up the mountain that is preparing you to acclimate yourself to the atmosphere that's at the higher level. You cannot expect for the universe, for God, whatever you want to call it, you cannot expect for them to allow you to birth forth a huge vision if you're still a business wimp, if you're still right. afraid of failure, if you're still afraid of rejection, because that's going to happen time and time again in business. And so ladies out there, specifically ladies, I know you're saying to yourself, because I speak to you, I hear from you consistently. I have so much on my plate. I'm afraid. I don't know if I can do it. Well, you know what? Here is a woman right here, living, breathing example, who has a lot on her plate too. But what I have found is that when you really have passion for what you're doing, you make room for it. You figure out how to really insert that into your life so that you can live your biggest vision. Now, what are some life lessons? I know you have tons because you have t-shirts and poems all about your life lessons, but do you have one or two life lessons you can give the audience that you've learned over the years? Um, I would say to piggyback off the point that you just made it in. Okay. So there's three. There's three. Um, one is to be grateful for where you start. Point blank. Like, be grateful for exactly where you are when you begin. Because I, my support system is outstanding. It's, it's bar none. And I, I pray that every day I try to show them that I'm grateful, but I'm human and I may or may not. But I, And so the fact of the matter is, of all the things that can make you dissatisfied and create dis-ease with your situation, those things that you will you lean into that, embrace those feelings, right? Because those are important, but also take the time to appreciate where you're starting from because that matters. And you have everything that you need to do what you need to do. So that's, first of all, it's a mindset. Um, the second thing is in business, everything is a resource. And the thing you figure out is your most valuable resource is your time and your energy, both your mental energy and your physical capacity. So I learned not to waste either of them complaining about what I can't do and make the decision to fetch, to try to figure out how to do it until the universe sends me someone who can help me do it. <laughs> and what I've learned along the way is that I'm able to do, I'm capable of doing a lot more than what I originally would have given myself credit for because I just hadn't had the opportunity to try it yet. So the second lesson is to try. Do not sell yourself short on what you think is your niche or your skill set or if you're not tech savvy or whatever. I say all the time, I'm a millennial on paper only. I was not a tech person. but I Only on paper. Only on paper. <laughs> only on paper. Only a paper and not the reality. You know, I'm a very interpersonal type of communicator, but you do what needs to be done. Um, and then the third thing is to have patience with and compassion for myself. Um, I think that's really, really big because I do believe in reflection. Reflection is one of the most important things that you can do. I do talk about it in one of my poems, The Creatress where you're able to simultaneously reflect, be fully present and in, in, in appreciative of your current situation while still creating ideas for your future, right? All at, at the same time. But in the midst of trying to balance those paradigms, we tend, especially perfectionists, which I may be one, mm -hmm. we tend to be hard on ourselves. We tend to not give ourselves credit for what we have done or who we are, not even what we do, but the fact that we are greatness in our being. And so I've learned over the last year to consistently take action every day or, you know, every week, whatever it is, as, as small or as large as it is, and to give it credit for what it is. Um, and not to try to beat myself up for what I didn't do. Because rest is important as well. And making time for rest is important and not feeling like it's 
unproductive. Um, so I absolutely I absolutely love that you mentioned passion, um, patience, and compassion for oneself because oftentimes when I speak to women, when I speak to entrepreneurs, they say this, some of the craziest things about themselves, things that they would right. never say about someone else, they're saying about themselves. And it's time right. for us to rise up and become our own best cheerleader, our own best friend. When people say to me, well, oh, I don't know if I should say that because, you know, I, I don't want to be braggadocious. I don't, I don't want to be, I want to be seen as humble. I say, no, listen, you need to be your own best publicist, your own best hype right. man, because how are people supposed to know otherwise? They're not going to come right. to your home, put in your thumb drive, and read your resume. You need to feel right. comfortable sharing that. And the patience thing, because entrepreneurship does take time. Oftentimes, yes, people say, does. "People say, well, what about these one-hit wonders, these people that come from out of nowhere and they have fame and money and contracts? And I often tell them, when you go past the press release, when you go past the story, they've been grinding for a long time. Think about mm -hmm. Beyonce That's and Britney Spears. They were grabbing contracts at five years old on the Disney Channel, dancing and singing and acting. They didn't just appear at right. 16 and was Beyonce. They were working on this since they were five years old. Even the people that are bloggers and vloggers, if you look back mm -hmm. years and years of putting out content, so that patience piece is so important. Now, yes, let's talk definitely. about fear. How do you define fear mm. and how can one overcome it? Mm. That's such a good question. <laughs> I remember um, someone used to tell me fear was false evidence that appears real. So when I think about fear, it is it's this paradigm that you've manufactured in your mind for the feeling that you'll get if you don't reach the desired destination. Wow. Can you repeat okay. that for so, our audience, please? Fear is the feeling that you have manufactured in your mind that you will get if you don't reach your desired destination. I'm, I'm bunny earing destination because I um, have one of, one of the steps in a six step process, I have not yet released this, but it is coming, um, is called recalibration. And to recalibrate is to challenge and redefine and restructure the paradigms that create our realities and how we engage with those realities. So I personally have decided not to believe in a destination. I decided to put more value in the journey itself. We are eternal beings and we are constantly journeying. We are constantly evolving. We are constantly developing into our best selves, period, right? So the, the, the false illusion of something that's comfortable is not really a thing anyway, because if you ever get to a place where you're comfortable, that means you've mastered that level. That means either you're going to intentionally go on to something else or the universe is going to require for you to go on to something else because you've already mastered it. But unfortunately, we we create these ideas in our mind that it has to be this way in this exact shape, way, or form for it to be successful, when really it should be how am I treating myself? How am I engaging with life? How are, You know what I mean? Like, what are those things? Because if you have that paradigm, what happens is what happens. And it's an opportunity to learn. And so you take those lessons and then you, you recalibrate again and you move on. Unfortunately, um, people don't necessarily view it like that. They try to get to a particular destination, which sells themselves short instead of just learning from the lessons that they collect in the gems that they collect along the way. So to get over it is to change your mind. <laughs> that, that mindset, it all it. goes to mindset. And we're quickly running out of time. I don't know how we go through time so quickly. We need to learn how to pause know. time because these that steps are just too I, juicy. Too, <laughs> too juicy. Girl. Listen, how does the audience connect 
to you? How do they learn more about your platform and what you're doing in the community and your business? And what can they look forward to? Because I know you have an ebook that's going to be coming out. It is out. It is available currently. Yes. Yes. It is available currently. So two things that I want for, for, for people to know. Number one is go to Hive over matter dot org that's h i v e over master dot org that's the hub that's where you can learn everything you need to know visit the buzz lounge and check out the um blog because you'll see entries from guest posts and content of mine and just really just get a feel for the culture there um so that's first off and you'll see the different products that we have but one thing that i really really want to encourage any woman who's listening to do is to definitely get the ebook, um, Your Story Workbook. Because in this book, this entire time, we've been talking about mindset and, and knowing yourself and reflection. Um, that has definitely been the biggest part of my healing is embracing my story. But you can't really do it if you don't take time to think and reflect on it. People think they learn by doing. You actually learn by reflecting on what, what happened. Um, and so in the ebook, you will receive all six of my original pieces from the Reflections um, Collection Poetry Collection and the matching artwork, as well as 22 daily writing prompts to inspire you to write about your story. Um, so you can do one every single day. You can skip a day and come back and chew on it. There's no rules to it. The only rule is that you do something a little bit every single time and watch how it envelopes out and what you learn um, about yourself. And also, for those who would like a platform, I am also accepting guest posts. So if you're journaling and you want feedback and you want to just engage with the community, you can definitely submit that, and we will send that out in our newsletter and in our blog post, um, part of our Bees Needs section. And um, I definitely encourage you, and that's, for, that's just for $30. Um, each of the poems normally sell separately for $10 a piece, so you're getting all of that um, for literally less than half the price, more than half the price. So definitely do it. I really know that it's gonna it's gonna help out. It's gonna help you. Wonderful. Well, it was so wonderful having you. I am so excited that I have you in our Power Mastermind. You've been such an amazing member. In addition, I am so excited, and the community is excited because. It, our world has been waiting for someone like you. Our world has been waiting for the next great Maya Angelou. And I think we have found her, people. We have found her. And she is ready to help you really do the work. To do the work to really become that bee, that queen bee. Hive over matter. Hello, Michelle Hollinger. Well, you hear the music. It's time for us to wrap up. See you next week, Monday, 9.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You have a great night. Zero to Shiro. Bye-bye. Opinions expressed on the preceding sponsored program were strictly those of its hosts, guests, and callers, and not necessarily those of the station.